Good morning, familia. Good morning, family guy. Welcome to the Morning Devo. And today is Friday, so we're calling this one the Money Devo. And yes, we're going to talk about money. Why? Because the Bible talks about money. And am I going to ask you for money? Maybe, <laughs> but maybe not. It's not all about what I want and what you want and what money does to us. It is what we can make money do for us. Because I know for sure that money is a horrible slave, but it's an excellent Excuse me, horrible master, but it's an excellent slave. Let me let me repeat that. Money is a horrible master, but it's an excellent slave. And the word of God speaks so much about finances, wealth, right? Health uh, talks about, you know, using wisdom to gain wealth. And God gives us the health to gain wealth. So there's nothing wrong with an overflow of financial breakthrough. There's nothing wrong with riches. There's nothing wrong with having things. But if you're placing all your attention to the material possessions, things, right, the blessings materially, instead of storing riches up in heaven, like the Bible says, then we're going to be in a whole lot of mess. And I don't want you to be in a mess. I don't want to be in a mess. Um, my finances will always be challenged. And so will you. Yours, your finances will always be challenged. A multi-billionaire's finances will always be challenged. There was an interview that I heard about. Uh, somebody was asked, how much money, and this was an interview um, of a rich person. They asked this rich person, how much money would it take for you to be happy? And the answer was more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Because people who have that as their their God, basically, because whatever you put in place of God, amen, becomes your God. So either you're serving the God of the Bible or you're serving a lesser God of this world, which could be money, material blessings, material things, and stuff like that. So the rich person, I think, answered wisely, right? The rich person says, um, to answer that question of how much money would it take for him to be happy, he just says, a little more, a little more. And the Bible has a lot to say about being wise when it comes to our finances, being wise when it comes to our decisions, when it comes to making money and all that stuff. So we're going to talk about it. So the money Devo is usually the morning Devo. My name is Brother DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Brother Sam Lopez. I'm excited for you to be here. It's Friday. A lot of people say Friday is the end of the work week. If you're working Monday through Friday, if you still have a nine to five, if you're under somebody else. And listen, I'm not here to tell you that working for somebody else is a sin, it's bad or whatever. Uh, that's on you. But if you want financial peace, you want financial breakthrough, you might want to rethink some things. A lot of things that I do, people call it a pyramid scheme, right? And a pyramid scheme is something that we've been adjusted to. We've been um, held to for so long that we can't even see it anymore. It's called uh, financial. Uh, it's called a work, working nine to five for somebody else. That's what it's called. That that's the original pyramid scheme because the CEO, whatever, is making all this money, and you will never get to that point unless you yourself become a CEO. Get it? So uh, although it's okay to work for somebody else and to serve under someone, I'm not against that at all. I'm just saying for me, I figured it out. For me and my lifestyle, it's like if I'm going to break some barriers, if I'm going to break some curses over my finances, I got to stop being under and I got to start utilizing what God has told me to do and has put me above. Right. So, you know, people think of Friday. Oh, Friday's payday for a lot of people in the United States or in the world. Um, they have a certain day designated to get paid. So when you're independent like me, every day has to be a payday. Every day you can make a day to get paid. Amen. And if you want any information of any of the online businesses, online marketing, anything like do right now, I'm doing a huge campaign online. Um, you might not even know it's me, but some of you know it's me. Uh, you see all these banners and ads all over the place. And I found a way um, to do that for one dollar a day for 31 days every month for one dollar a day um, to reach thousands upon thousands of people uh, with some good offers. And since I'm a Christian, a Christ follower, right? Uh, 99.9% .9 of my offers are all godly. Amen. I have to leave a little percentage out because I don't know the developers like that. I don't know some of the people that I'm sharing their products with. I don't know them personally, so I have to leave that little percentage. But listen, if you want to know anything about online marketing, if you haven't joined my page, Mr. Sam Lopez, on Facebook, and you haven't joined um, or even looked at my page, MrSanLopez.com, you might want to check it out. There's one episode podcast there, and there's something, a money challenge that I did way back, I think it was in July, 
that you might be interested in. Amen. I'm just going to leave that there. It's not an advertisement or anything like that. But I want to get into the word. I want to get into this morning Devo, this Monday Devo for this Friday. Amen. But before that, let me say good morning to Brother Damien. God bless you, my bro. Good morning. Welcome to the morning morning Devo, the Money Devo. It's Friday. So on Fridays, I try to do something about health and wellness or wealth. So I'm going to talk about something that will inspire your weekend, that will inspire you to move forward and dream big. If you're not dreaming, start dreaming again in the name of Jesus, right? So we're going to take some time to pray, and then we're going to share this out for at least 60 seconds, share this out. But before that, if you have any questions, concerns, any prayer requests, anything like that, or comments, don't be afraid to leave them right here in the live. And also, if you're listening from the podcast, welcome to the Morning Devo. I try to do these Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But it's okay if you can't join me live because most people listen to it later on. Most people. Most people listen to it later on. A lot of people are not on my schedule, and I can't really compliment your schedule either. So thank God for technology that you could listen to this or you could watch this at your convenience. Amen. So don't hesitate to connect with me, contact me. If you have something private you want to share, you could always inbox or you could always email me at djsamrock at soulwinnerswithaz.org. I have some things coming in the works September 27th. I'm launching an online church. Yes, an online church unauthorized by anybody except the Lord Jesus. Amen. I've been wanting to do that for a long, long, long time. And what I'm going to start it with is sharing your faith, a five-day series about sharing your faith. Because I, I read some stats that were like, wow, that's kind of, that's bad. According to the stats that I saw, only 22% of Christians are, you know, in all age groups pretty much, are really sharing their faith. And there's a lot of reasons for it. And if you want to find out why why could that be, you have to join me September 27th. In the meantime, just go to djsamrock.com forward slash S, like Sam, Y, F, like faith. Share your faith. S Y F. So DJ Sandrock.com forward slash S Y F. Share your faith. Amen. So enough said of that. I'm excited about it though because I know for sure it's gonna open some eyes and we're gonna rethink this thing. Amen. If you want to be a part of the kingdom culture. So shout out to God Send Clothing. Amen. And let's look at this. So since I'm sharing this right now and I have a shirt on, and if you have his um, shirts, amen, Godsend, take a picture, tag them on Instagram or Facebook to be entered to win some free merch and a drawing to win free merch, merch. And if you haven't visited the website yet, go to GodsendStudios.com, GodsendStudios.com, amen, and tell them I sent you and you might be eligible for 15% off with code GodSend15, amen, shameless plug right there. To the brother Gino Santana and his um, clothing company, I really it's really comfortable. It's really holding up. It's the second time I washed it, it's holding up. Amen. Great quality. Amen. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for your evidence of your power in my life and the power in every single believer's life right now. I pray, Lord God, peace be still. I pray financial breakthrough. I pray health, strength, and protection to our bodies physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I pray a hedge of protection over every single person that's connecting now or is going to connect later. Them and their families, their whole household, Lord, their whole bloodline. From the youngest to the very oldest and everyone in between. I pray, Lord God, arcing angels forward, warring angels, ministering angels forth right now by the power of Holy Spirit God, by the power of the name of Jesus, that they will be witnesses and ministers of the gospel towards every single household that needs help right now during this time, during this space, during this place, right now on this side of eternity. So I speak, Lord God, hope, trust, faith forward. And I pray, Lord God, that you would show us what does it really mean to be rich and why should we want to be rich? Amen. And how should we try to stay in line with your word when it comes to riches and wealth? So today's message in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Today's message is called try to get rich on the morning Devo, the money Devo. And the question is, how do you define rich? Because a lot of people define rich differently. Amen. But we should come to a conclusion. We we should come to an agreement of what riches means. What what does it mean to be rich? Biblically, right? The world has all kinds of ideas about riches and wealth. 
Uh, the Bible has the idea of riches and wealth. So learn to manage your wealth. And if you're watching me right now from a device, mobile device, computer, phone, whatever the case, you are rich. You realize that you have more wealth than a large percentage of this world that has poverty. So we're blessed um, to be doing what we're doing, um, to be listening to a podcast, to be watching live streams. We're blessed. That means we have riches. How are we managing those riches? Some people say, I'm broke. And meanwhile, you have a $1,200 phone in your hand. I'm broke. Meanwhile, you have a fridge full of food. Listen, I'm not going to start preaching. But I just wanted to pray. And now let's take 60 seconds to share this out. When we come back, um, we're going to tackle the first scripture. And the first scripture, give me one second, will be Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, verses 23 and 24. We're going to hear the Lord Jesus speak, amen, on this whole issue of wealth. And financial breakthrough, prosperity, and riches. Amen. So I'm excited because I want to hear what the Lord has to say. And then I'm going to couple that with another scripture. And then we're going to put it all together. We're going to think about it, pray about it. And then we're going to activate this word over our lives. Amen. I'll be right back in 60 seconds starting now. That 60 seconds goes by so fast. Let's go to Matthew chapter 19, verses 23 and 24. Matthew 19, 23 and 24. Um, Let's read it. Then Jesus said to his disciples. So Jesus is speaking to his disciples. So excuse me for all those who don't believe in Jesus for one minute. Just give me one minute. Give the Lord a time to speak. Give him a hearing, right? You're not a believer? It's okay. Give him a hearing right now. I tell you the truth. Jesus is the ultimate truth teller. It is very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Did Jesus say it's impossible for the rich to enter enter into the kingdom of heaven? Or did he say it's very hard? It is very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'll say it again. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And that could be a metaphor, and I don't think he's saying that a camel could go through the eye of a needle because we're we're Americanized, right? When when I read this, I read it like with Western eyes, right? So I'm looking at a, a needle, like a needle, that little eye, and a camel's hump, amen, to go into that little needle, and it's hyperbole, it's like it's a big example. Um, but I read into that years ago, and it means that a camel, um, the eye of a needle is a, a kind of like you know. Like if you do that that game that you have to go underneath a bar, things called limbo. Yeah, a camel have a has a hunch, right? A hunchback. So if a camel needs to really get under that thing, it has to go on all four and kind of slide under that thing. That's how hard um, Jesus is saying it is for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because I believe rich people have a lot of ties with their possessions. My car right now is out of out of service, right? And the engine blew up. And now the warranty company is fighting me, right? Um, as expected. Um, not even the warranty company, excuse me, the dealer. So they don't want to honor it. They want to make sure they're not going to get, they're calling me right now, as a matter of fact. They don't want to get, um, you know, uh, they want to make their money. So I'm thinking, wow. Um, so I have no vehicle right now. So that means um, something got to give. I got to get something else. Because it seems like it's not going to go in my favor. But if it does go in my favor, amen, praise the Lord. If it doesn't go in my favor, amen, praise the Lord. Because God still has my finances and everything. So when Jesus is talking about the camel going through the eye of a needle, that a rich person into the kingdom, 
I don't have any any possession right now that I'm holding so much onto that if I have to let it go, I let it go. That car, it's under under a car loan, right? I pay a car note. If I have to let it go, I have to let it go. I have no ties to it. Amen. And we'll we'll figure out the whole financial thing and the financial, the loan and all that stuff. We'll figure that out later on. But in the meantime, I'm trusting Jesus. I'm trusting God with everything. So I think it's hard for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of heaven because they got ties to it. They said, no, I'm not getting rid of my car. No, I'm not getting rid of my house. No, I'm not getting rid of that. And you might have a, a big house and there's only two, three people living in it. And it's because you don't want to downgrade. So you stay there. And that kind of mindset, you know, I have to keep this. I don't want to go backwards. You ever heard somebody say that? Oh, I don't want to go backwards. Um, listen, if it's time to downsize, it's time to downsize. As a believer, we're just passing through anyway. Amen. If you have, if you're blessed to have a car, a house, you know, a nice, a nice pool or whatever in your house. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give Him praise, honor, glory, and all that. Good. Amen. If you don't have it, give Jesus praise, honor, glory, honor, worship him anyway. Why? Because we have more than enough when we have him. So that's what Jesus said. <clears throat> so if he's talking about rich people, I believe Jesus and his definition of rich should be the ultimate definition. But how do you yourself define being rich? How do you define rich? To me, I define it as Living, right, uh, in your means. That's being rich. Like, not wanting or coveting everybody else's stuff. You see a nice car across the street, you'd be like, oh, man, I wish I had that car. You see a nice house across the street, you'd be like, man, I wish I had that house. And you see a, a nice building that you would like to do ministry in, you'd be like, I wish I had that building. That's coveting, the kind, at least to me. I know that's a little bit hardcore, but to me, it's coveting. Wanting some, someone else's property or wanting something that somebody else has and you don't have it. That's coveting. Do not covet, the Bible says, right? The Word of God says it. So if I'm living within my means, I, I'm content. It doesn't mean that I'm, I'm lazy. I'm far from it. Um, while you were sleeping probably at 2, 3 in the morning, I was working on my online course. I was working in the ministry. I do stuff at night. Amen. I'm no way a, a morning person. So it's, it's a partial miracle if that even, even is a thing. Partial miracle, right? That I get up so early. This is not even early to some people. This is like afternoon to people. This is early for me. I just, I just was up to like 2, 3 in the morning um, this morning. Amen. Working online amen keeping things afloat because I, i'm trusting and believing the word of god over my life what about you so your definition of being rich could be different than my definition of being rich but god talks about riches amen and he says through jesus god himself says i tell you the truth it is a very hard it is very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven i don't know why could it be because they have attachments to the things of this world more than they have attachments to the things of God? Could could that be? Amen. Could that could that be the reason why it's so hard for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of heaven? Could it be that wealth could be their barrier? Amen. And I'll include myself in there as a wealthy person because I have I have a roof over my head. I'm wealthy. I have Jesus. I'm the wealthiest. I have in my family, for those who don't have Jesus and they have more possessions, in my family, I'm talking to my family, and you have a lot of possessions, a lot of wealth, streams of income and all that stuff, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm happy for you. But if you don't have Jesus, amen, then those wealth, that wealth that you have stored up here, don't you know that robbers, thieves could enter into your home or enter into your car or any of your building, your possessions, and could steal from it? But you know something? I chose the latter part. I chose to say, listen, I'm going to store my riches up in heaven. So I'm going to sow seeds here while I'm here on earth, but I'm going to store my riches in heaven where moth and rust and thieves cannot get to it. Amen. It's all protected. It's better than any home protection um, insurance that you could ever get on this side of eternity. Right. So if you define rich as having a lot, I think that's part of being rich, but I define rich as having Jesus, as having God, and that's more than enough. So every time I look at my fridge when there's food in there, I bless God. Um, every time I look at my bank account, whether it is a lot or a little, I bless God because at least I have an account, right? Every time I get into a vehicle, my vehicle, right? Even though we have just one now, amen, I look at the vehicle and I thank God for it. 
I thank God for his grace every day over my life, for my health, for the strength, for protecting me and my family. Amen. For guarding me. It's so much to thank God for that I don't have time to hold on to material blessings. I don't have time to hold on to material things. You know, we we as a kingdom of God, I believe we have to make some decisions. I think we have to make some decisions that really will make uh, a difference. Right? It will make a difference. Um, Let me explain. If you are a minister of the gospel, maybe a pastor of a church or an evangelist or apostle, a teacher or a prophet, right? And you're looking at a property, right? And that property, or you might even be in the property already. And that property is really more, more of a burden than a blessing. Look at that property real good. And I know God will give you a big, um, you know, dream of increase and all that. But wisdom has to play a part too, right? So if you have a building that's empty and you're paying all this mortgage, all these bills, all these electric, um, you know, utility bills, the maintenance and all this stuff. And the building's so big and it's a burden more than a blessing. Don't you think wisdom would tell you, listen, let's downgrade, right? And build up from where we downgrade from. Because downgrade is not all a bad thing, amen. If you have, let's let's do a little, um, like, let's do a little diagram in your mind, right? You got a building. Just let's make the numbers small. A hundred people fit in your sanctuary in your church, right? And only ten people show up every week. Does the church look empty or full? Looks empty, right? So, and that's been going on for years and years and years. And you're like, but where are the people? Well, God gave it to people. Those 10 that show up every week. Those are the people you start with, concentrate on. You bless them. You invest in them. Amen. And then you come together and ask for wise counsel. And the wise counsel might be, uh, this building is too big for us. Let's downsize. And all the money that we save from downsizing, amen, we'll build it up from the 10. Then the 10 will go into 20. Then once you have the overflow in that building or that place and that space, amen, then you start looking at bigger things. Abraham, I just, I'm, I'm gonna just tell you, look at the story of Abraham. Amen. When, he, when God told him to move on, he he moved on and he chose where he was gonna go. Amen. But then he had to be reminded of his promises over his life by the Lord Himself. I'm gonna leave that right there. I don't know why I went there, but that was for somebody. Amen. May, might be for me. Amen. Sister Joyce, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo Friday. So it's Friday. So this is the Money Devo. We're talking about finances. So the wealth barrier for a rich person could be because of their definition of wealth. They're holding on to what they have here, amen, instead of letting it go. Listen, you want to help this ministry out and you're a multi-millionaire, you want to send me a million dollars, praise the Lord. If you send me a million dollars, I'm going to try hard to give out a million dollars. Praise God, amen. I know you don't believe me, but I'm going to try my hardest. I'd rather have one million souls than a million dollars in my bank account. I'd rather... I'll reach the people, like a million people. With a million dollars, I could reach a lot more people than I'm reaching now. But praise the Lord. Amen. One person that I might reach today could be a cause or, or, you know, it takes a little spark to make a flame, right? It takes a little spark to make a flame. Amen. And, you know, it takes, it doesn't take a lot to start a revival. It takes people who believe in Jesus to start a revival. So if you send a million dollars to this ministry, um, Anyway, it's legal anyway that I have to put it back out. So I'll be able to help out so much more people. But I'm not going to hold on to it. A lot of people wanted to hold, want to hold on to that. They want to hold on bad to what God is already telling them to let go. You're holding on to something that God told you to let go. Amen. That's for somebody. Praise, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Keep on downloading this stuff. What's going on? I'm going to get in trouble. And he also wants us to be wise. He also wants us to be wise. God is not out there you know, just telling us to play a guessing game when it comes to our finances, to our health, uh, to our wealth building, to sharing the kingdom process and the kingdom values. He's not out there um, just out there telling us to wing it. <laughs> Excuse me. He's actually helping us to make wise decisions. But God is so so of a gentleman, gentle spirit that God is. All powerful yet gentle at the same time. Don't ask me to explain it. He'll allow us to make some mistakes. Amen. Um, because he loves us. He wants us to be able to make choices. Amen. Um, excuse me. I'm keep on looking down because I want to make sure some of these groups um, get, are getting this message. 
So if we're going to learn how to manage what we already have, amen, we need the wisdom of God. Turn to me, turn with me to Proverbs um, 23 verses 4 and 5. Proverbs chapter 23 verses 4 and 5. I'm tongue tied today. Don't wear yourself out. This is Proverbs chapter 23 verses 4 and 5. Please don't get mad at me. Amen. This is the word of God. And the reason why it might challenge our way of thinking, especially from where we're thinking it from, um, you know, we live in America, from where I'm broadcasting, we think differently. The people in the Middle East probably will get this more quicker. It will quicken their spirit because they know they know these type of ideas. But the American church, the American gospel has kind of like tarnished some things. And we have to go back to the basics, go back to the word of God. And we do ourselves a huge disservice. And this is a bonus. A huge disservice by trying to read the Bible with an American mindset. Do you realize the scriptures were written in Hebrew and Greek? Right? So that means if the Bible is written in Hebrew and Greek, that means the language that was spoken, the original language, is not English. I'm just saying. Clue. So word studies are gold. You want to know what a scripture really means? Something's bothering you. It's like, man, I don't think that's right. I don't think they preach that right. It's because the wording... It's Americanized, like we're we're reading the Bible, a translated Bible, in an, in our dialogue, in our dialect. So my, we're not, we may not be capturing the true essence, the true meaning of the scriptures sometimes. But let's read this: Proverbs twenty three four and five. Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. Ooh, you see. American person will be like, oh, is the Bible telling me to quit? No, the Bible's not telling you to quit. <laughs> the Bible never tells you to quit. The Bible tells you to hold on, press forward, move forward, be courageous, be strong. The Bible tells us to move in, the, in, in God's power. But you see how that might throw us off a little bit? And somebody might start preaching, the Bible tells us to quit. Don't be rich. Does the Bible really say that? If you do word study on Proverbs 23, 4 and 5, your eyes will open up this much and be like, oh, wow, I never knew that. Because we're talking about a translated word right now. We're reading a translated word. So be wise enough to know when to quit. In the blink of an eye, wealth disappears. I know that's right. Amen. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute. For if for it will sprout wings and fly away like an eagle. Listen. I want to say two, was it two years back or three years back? Your brother right in front of you, brother Sam Lopez, I made $10,000 in one month in one of my businesses. And I was like, what in the world just happened? That's the most money I made in one month. Um, Yeah. Well, no, I'm lying. But at that point, at that point, at that point, at that point, that was the most money I made on my online business. Any of them. Amen. And boy, you know what happened? The, that money grew wings and flew away like, like an eagle because everything started happening at the same time. My wife's car broke down, needed an engine, I think, or a transmission, one or the other, or both, I think. I forgot what it was. And poof, right out the window. I was like, what just happened? But it was there. And God was showing me, teaching me, amen, that money just goes away. I didn't even have time to... To, to enjoy it. I didn't have time to invest it. Amen. God allowed me to have a couple of dollars here and there to move it forward for the kingdom purpose. But um, I had to use that for a lot of things that just fell apart. Like it was it was like clockwork. I was just telling my wife the other week. I was like, isn't it like clockwork every time we we get um, a large amount of income, a lot of blessing like clockwork, something happens. Amen. And it seems like all the time. So I, I, I trust God. And I believe God. But like, okay, God, you're showing us something. Um, maybe we just need to sit down and look at why this is happening. All the, I, I don't, I, ooh, that's a strong word. All the time, most of the time. Amen. Now, fast forward to tape. Last year, we're in 21, right? I'm telling you, man, the calendar is just so fast for me. Last year, in one month. Um, I made 30000 People think, oh, you're lying, Sam. You better give to the church. You better tithe and all that. Um, when that happens, when that happens, when that happens, right, uh, I'm, I'm real cautious. I'm like looking around like, uh-oh, that means something's going to happen. So I prepare myself. 
for this is just me. I'm not preaching to you and telling you this is how you should be thinking, but I'm preparing myself. Look at the left, look to the right. Uh oh. Um, here is a blessing here. So what do I have to prepare myself for? Amen. And I made that bad boy stretch out for a whole year. I wasn't playing around. I wasn't, you know, you know, throwing money everywhere. I was making that bad boy stretch for a whole year. Stretch it out, stretch it out, stretch it out. And then I started noticing. I said, wow, I think I used wisdom. I wasn't wearing myself out to get rich. Amen. I knew when to quit. I was doing all types of, do you think I'm busy now? I was busier. Amen. And when that money dropped into the account, I was like, okay, um, let's use wisdom here. Right. And I could have did some foolish things with that amount of money. And I had to, you know, battle the flesh and say, whoa, I could dump this money into this and try to make this grow. And I said, no, let me go and trust God and use wisdom. Amen. So how do you get the kind of wisdom that this verse talks about? Because it says, don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. Oh, wow. That rhymes, right? What's up? Tim and Rob in the building. God bless you, bros. Uh, welcome to the Money Devo. We're talking about money. I'm asking everybody for a million dollars right now. Nah, I'm not doing that. Amen. Yo, if you ever see me acting crazy like that and saying like, you know, part of my brothers and sisters in ministry that do this all the time, I'm not with it. Uh, if it wasn't for you and the followers and the sponsors, we wouldn't be able to do this ministry. We wouldn't we want to be able to reach people with the gospel message? You ain't. You will never. You will never hear me say that. That's to me, Sam Lopez. That's a big, fat lie. God started this. Started this ministry. Amen. With no support, right? You know, very little support. I shouldn't say no. So very little support. No sponsors, right? No big, you know, investors or anything like that. So when ministries do that, uh, it's my pet peeve. Amen. I, I fall back and I'm in contact with one of the biggest ministries in all North America right now. And we're setting up something, an interview right now as we speak. Amen. I already send them my availability and they're going to give me 30 minutes of their time. Amen. And I'm excited about that because I forgot that ministries that are huge, ministries are all huge, by the way, if you're, if you're preaching the gospel. But ministries that have financial backing and they're national, amen, are the same as a ministry when it comes to God and when he looks at it, same as a ministry that I'm doing. So I'm reaching out. I forgot. I, I used to reach out to all these big ministries and think that nobody was going to get back. Listen, man, I reached out to big names. I'm not going to mention them now. And they get back to you. Because they're real people and they want to spread the real message of the gospel. So coming soon, Lord willing, um, when they're available, amen, I already gave them a week of availability. So that should be coming very soon. And I'm excited about that. But I'm not going to be the one to say, you know, when it comes to money, I don't play around. We got you, bro. 10%, right? Yeah, 100 grand. Give it to me. I think that's about 100,000. Yeah, give it to me right now. Right now, I demand it. And then I'm not the other people that go around saying, I command God to do this, that, and the third. Um, tell me how that works out for you, if you're one of the persons who do that. So how do you get that kind of wisdom that this verse talks about? Well, looks like you have to just ask for it. God will give you the wisdom um, to for your finances, um, how to be healthy, how to be wealthy, how to, you know, have wellness practices, amen, and all that stuff going on in your life. Use wisdom. God gives you the wisdom. You know what godly wisdom is? Knowing what God would have me and you do. That's godly wisdom. The world's wisdom says, ah, just get it. Take it. Get all you can. Can all you get. Do whatever you want with whoever you want to do it with, whenever you want to do it, and keep on moving. Don't worry about it. That's what the world's, that's, that's the world's wisdom. And... I'm smiling because I'm like, oh, I used to think that way. I was part of that world system. But God changed me and transformed me, renewed me, gave me the born again experience. And now when it comes to wealth and wellness and health, I think um, I could do it because God says I can. And he says you could do it too. You could be in the mindset of a believer. You could be the mindset. You could have the mind of Christ because he says 
He gave us the mind of Christ. And this is only for people who put their trust and hope and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one who died, right? Was crucified, laid down his life, by the way. He didn't, nobody took his life. He wasn't murdered. He laid down his life. Then he died, was, was put in a borrowed tomb. And then three days later, something amazing happened. He rose from the dead. He rose from the grave. Um, nobody found his body. He showed his body afterwards, but nobody found his body to this day. There's no bones of Jesus. No. All the technology we have, satellite systems and excavating machines and all that stuff, nobody found the body of Christ. <clears throat> that makes people mad because like, where's this body? If we find a body, um, we could get rid of all Christianity. Absolutely. Yes, you can. Find the body of Christ and Christianity is all out the window. We have no hope. We're, we're liars and we've been deceived all these years. But the problem is you never found his body, yet he came resurrected bodily. Bodily is in all history books besides the scriptures. People wrote about him. and I don't want to go down that road, but I should and I could if, if necessary. So what's one thing you've learned about managing money wisely? And then I'll be out because I'm over time here. What's one thing that God has showed you? When it comes to managing your money wisely. Because people say, oh, I don't have no money. Listen, I, I made I made it this way. This is the way I think about it. I don't have enough, so I'm going to give a lot. <laughs> I don't have enough anyway. You know, so I'm going to give it out. I'm going to sow seeds. I don't have enough. Amen? Uh, whatever that means. Whatever enough is. But in hindsight, I'm like, yeah, I have more than enough. So I have to use wisdom. It's, people use wisdom of God. Um, individually, right? So, where did you get that information from, Sam? I got it from the Word of God. Oh, well, what a, what does the reality say? As if the Word of God is not reality. You ever you ever bumped into the person that says, "Oh, you believe in God," but in the real world, I'm like, which world are we in? Like a a different world here? Amen. Well, even though I can't make fun of that idea because people think and people believe in multi universes. Oh, you know, we're really not here. We're like in another multi-dimension, another universe somewhere else. And some people think we don't even exist. We're just imaginative, imaginative things, beings. So I can't even make fun of that. Um, I'm not going to make fun of nothing. But I'm just saying, I can't even say um, that people believe that we're in this world right now because a lot of people think we're in an alternate reality. But when it comes to God finances, wealth, amen, that is reality, God spoke on it, he knows about it, he doesn't want us to serve him and try to serve money at the same time, you either love the one and hate the other, you can't serve God and money at the same time, amen, people think they can, or people serve their God, which is money, possessions, you know, material things, but God and God alone should be served, because if you don't serve God and God alone, you're going to serve another God who is lesser. And then you're going to shortchange your whole life. And you're going to short-circuit your faith. And you're not going to really have the hope that God is offering. And you're not going to be able to do what God asks you to do. Because you're hoping and trusting in something that's lesser than God. Lesser than God. Amen. So that's all I had. I hope you were blessed. Proverbs 23 verses 4 and 5. And the other one was um, what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19 verses 23 and 24. Now my suggestion will always be. Read the whole chapter. So that way you say, oh, Sam, you're taking that out of context. Well, if I am, let me know about it. I'm not a fool, so I'm willing to be corrected. A fool doesn't, a, a fool is not willing to be corrected, but I am willing to be corrected. So therefore, I'm not a fool. Matthew chapter 19, read the whole chapter for yourself. Amen. It's amazing how people just go by what? An evangelist, pastor, prophet, apostle, uh, pastor, teacher say. And they'll just go by what they say. And then when they find that there might be some error or some discrepancy, they'll blame it on those people instead of you yourself looking at the scripture for yourself. What's going on here? Like, you could get literally, I'll send you a Bible. I'll send you a link to a Bible app. Like, there's no excuse why you can't just go to the scriptures yourself and read the scriptures. I mean, I mean, I heard about lazy, but wow, that's lazy if you're not going to the scriptures for yourself. And also Proverbs chapter 23. Read the whole chapter. Amen. Keep me in check. Make sure I'm not grabbing from one part of the scripture and grabbing another piece and making it fit and then 
I'm making it fit with my message. I totally 100% on these morning devos and on the Blaze Bible study and everything I do when I'm in public speaking, I totally 100% rely on Holy Spirit God. Sometimes I say things out of my mouth and I'm looking at it later on and say, why did I say that? And then I'll, I'll find a scripture on it that I didn't even speak about because I'm hoping and praying that God will just speak through me. I'm not the all-knowing, almighty, omnipresent, omniscient, right, all-powerful God. I am a son of that almighty, all-present, all-knowing, almighty, loving, holy, righteous, graceful, merciful God. Amen. I'm a child of this God that we're talking about. So bless your finances. Bless your health in Jesus' name. I pray that you have a great weekend. And hopefully we can fast forward um, this message to someone else else amen i'm tongue-tied as you can see that i'm a little groggy and um just share this out with believers unbelievers friends uh enemies i believe everybody could get this word and if you are inspired to release this word amen <clears throat> i believe you should activate this word amen asap today this is a today word, a now word. So that way, the more you know of what God is saying, the more of what you know what God has done, the more you can activate what he has done and what he has said in your personal life. And then this reality that people say is not a reality, this word is my reality. And it becomes your reality as well as soon as you accept, believe, and receive what God is offering. He, God offers the best plan, amen? There's no greater plan than the plan of salvation and eternal life. You can search any religion. You can search whatever. Um, it's based on works and good deeds and all that other stuff. And also, every religion besides Christianity believes that Jesus, Christianity, we say, we believe that Jesus is God. Every other religion in the whole entire universe, in the whole entire planet, says that he's not. So you could narrow it down to two hands. On the left hand, people are saying Jesus is not God. And the right hand, Christians are saying he is but it's not that we're saying it. It's that he said it. Jesus said he's the only way, the only truth, and the only life. Amen. Can't get to the Father except by him. Speak to Jesus on that. Amen. He said it. He made the claim. And he's backing it up. And he's coming back soon. So let's get right. Stay ready. Get ready. Amen. For the return of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good word and teaching. God bless you with your million amen i receive if i if sister joyce if i get this million dollars amen you're gonna see a ministry that is giving out so much that the blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings and everyone around me will be blessed because it's strange to me that if a ministry or a minister is blessed everybody around them should be blessed too i'm this that's the way i'm thinking amen because every time i, I would see jesus walking people were blessed Amen. Even the people who hated him, they were in a flow of blessing because God will bless all those who came to him. He would not in any way turn anybody away. And I have the same heart because I have the heart of Christ. God is now God is a now God. Just keep working faithfully. And we're in the now of his timing. Yes, sir, Robert. Yes, sir. In the now of his timing. I like that. So I'm out of here. God bless you all. God keep you all. Thank you for hanging out with me. And hearing me out and hearing, most importantly, hearing the word. Because that's the word of God is what transforms. Not only for information, the word of God is for transformation. So God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Happy weekend. Peace.